Thank you for the introduction. My name is uh, Suzanne Kiefer. I'm from uh, UC Louvain, Belgium. I'm an uh, associate professor there and I've been using Moodle uh, intensively since 2017. Uh, during this presentation, I'm going to talk about peer review, retro feedback and workshop, the workshop uh, activity in Moodle. Uh, it's my first uh, global mood and I'm very happy about it. I've been uh, to the French mood in 2023. Um, and last summer, my colleague Isabelle presented at the Moot France 2024, the French version of this presentation, and we received a good feedback. I hope this won't be different today. Um, Isabelle Mott, my colleague, is our uh, Moodle goddess at UC Louvain. She's uh, uh, um, a Moodle administrator, developer, and um, really a good advisor on how to handle things. Um, so let me uh, give some uh, terminology first so we can und understand each other. Um, peer review is um, when I, as a student, uh, and we are all students, let's say we are all students in this room, I'm going to evaluate some of your works, like your work, your work, your work, and so on. That's peer review. It's a valuable tool because it supports uh, self-assessment. I can compare my work against yours then. Uh, critical thinking about how, what I could have done a little better. And collaboration because if I have any question regarding your work, I can straight ask you, okay, what did you mean when you were doing this? Um, so it consists of sometimes using a rubric, grading some work, and then provide a feedback. That's what I'm going to refer to as a feedback in the following. Retro feedback, on the other hand, is when you guys that I evaluated give me a feedback on how well I did when I gave my feedback. Uh, to distinguish the both terms, I'm going to use feedback during peer review and the retro feedback when you give me a feedback about how well I did with my review. Because if I tell you, oh, your work was excellent, you cannot do anything about it to actually improve it. Uh, instead, if I provide a comprehensive feedback with a balance between positive and negative comments, asking questions, trigger um, uh, reflection, then it might be helpful. And that's what we here consider as a good feedback. Um, so the contribution, I hope, of this presentation is threefold. Um, I'm going to compare features and the students' experience between the Moodle workshop and Challenge Me for peer review with retro feedback. Challenge Me could be, uh, is a sponsor actually of the Mood France. Uh, it's not here today. And what they do is they actually create challenge that include a retro feedback in the workshop. Then I'm going to discuss the integration of retro feedback into Moodle workshop. And third, uh, I'm going to present how I evaluate the user experience of the students using some uh, questionnaires and yeah, the way I proceeded. So how many of you are already familiar with the Moodle workshop? Could you raise your hand? Yeah? Yeah, half, half. So let me quickly explain a little bit. Uh, the Moodle workshop is the Moodle activity that allows or supports peer review. It includes five phases, the setup phase, where instructor can set up everything, such as the way it's going to be graded, uh, the dates, uh, instructions on how to, what are the instructions for the work to be submitted, etc. During submission phase, which is highlighted here, in this uh, green thing, the students can uh, submit their work on the platform. Then goes the assessment phase where each student provides feedbacks to a certain number of their peers. 
Then there is the grading evaluation phase during which the grades are going to be calculated. Um, there are different strategies. I'm not going to get too much into details about this. But then during the closing phase, the students, they get two things, two grades, one grade for the work, one grade for the review. And they also can access the, the entire review that they were given from their peers. Challenge me. Uh, follows a similar process that's very similar, except what they have here that you cannot actually see uh, is the um, retro feedback phase that they put uh, right after the assessment phase. So I'm going back here. Uh, they put an additional thing here that would uh, be like the retro feedback phase. Um, so the objectives of the study were to uh, compare the Moodle workshop and challenge me from the student's point of view. We assessed the user experience, their preferences, and their attitude toward peer review. The user experience um, was assessed in terms of quality of content, trustworthiness of content, clarity, trust, usefulness, Perspicuity, which is uh, the extent to which it's easy to learn how to use the tool. Efficiency and dependability. Dependability is how much uh, I feel in control of things and how predictable the user interface is. For example, if I do this, I know it's going to behave um, this way. Um, to assess the user experience, we used uh, the user experience questionnaire plus, which is a standardized questionnaire that is um, modular. So you can actually pick up different uh, scales if you like. If you want to test stimulation, then you pick up stimulation. Uh, and then you, yeah, there are 26 currently, I think, between 25 and 30 different scales that you can just add to your protocol and uh, use the tool as is. So the context of the study was a master course I give at UC Louvain about data visualization. Um, it, it involves uh, three programs, so it's followed by um, um, yeah, three different uh, programs. So the, the, the crowd is diverse. Um, and last year, because I did the data collection last year, well, last academic year, during uh, February, May 2024, uh, there were 34 students registered. Uh, for the purpose, for the for my study, I divided them into two groups of 17, J1 and J2, and I used two of the assignments that I have in this course to make the data collection. So J1 uh, worked for the first assignment on Moodle and did the second assignment on Challenge Me, and uh, group two did this the other way around. So maybe a little more detail now uh, about the Moodle versus Challenge Me. So the submission works ex in a very similar way. Same with the assessment, the first assessment. So for example, here, that's an example. The numbers here are only for a give a example. Each student submit one work, and then each student perform five reviews. In the Moodle workshop, that's it. Then uh, the grades are calculated. You get one for the work, one for the quality of the reviews, and you can access the five reviews of your work. In Challenge Me, you have this retro feedback step that is uh, additional. And then each student has to evaluate the quality of the five received feedback. And then you get the grades the reviews, and the reviews of your review, which is great because then you can say, OK, oh, I did rather poorly on this review because I ask no questions. Uh, I only put there bad comments. Nothing was positive. And maybe I was not super articulated when I explained how things should have worked. So what I did. so. You could say, OK, uh, how did you compare two things that work differently? 
I did some sort of bricolage that you have here. Uh, I combined uh, two workshops instead of just one. I did, in the Moodle condition, two workshops. The workshop one was focused on the work, just as a regular workshop in Moodle. And then I asked the student, each of them, each student that submitted their work and did the review, to copy paste their five reviews as a new work in a second workshop, the retro feedback workshop. They assessed the quality of all the reviews provided by five peers during the workshop one. And they, get, they got two grades and five reviews of the reviews. Um, so what's not exactly the same here between Challenge Me and Moodle is that uh, this is not perfect. Um, because uh, I could have improved this. Um, they, they actually see if you assign the reviews through Moodle, it can do that randomly. That's what I did here. So in the second workshop, when they had to assess the quality of the review provided by peers, it was not about their own work, but about someone else's without the work being submitted to them. So it was not contextualized. And because it was not the feedback they received about their own work, it was not personalized. So they took distance. A, a way of doing this much better next time I'm going to do it is to use the separate group mode in the workshop so then they can work in groups and then I know I can be consistent in who is evaluating who. Uh, so this is the rubric I used for the retro feedback. <clears throat> it's from uh, Gillen and the Weaver 2015, um, who adapted from feedback quality index from Prince. Um, and I removed examples and formulation, sorry, because I wanted to maintain the retro feedback process as short as possible because it takes a lot of time. And if you count, let's say, one or two minutes per criteria, and if you get five work to review, then uh, it won't fit in one course session. And I wanted the entire process about each of the assignment to fit in one session. Uh, it was in French, so I trans translated everything in French myself without the French translation having been approved by anyone else than ChatGPT. <laughs> so here are the results. Spoiler alert. So the user experience was judged better by the student using Moodle. However, the preferences were distributed, half of them preferred Moodle, the other half preferred Challenge Me. And we also observed a greater consensus between the two groups, G1 and G2, uh, during the second assignment, um, especially regarding usefulness and clarity of the received feedback. So it's good that uh, by the time they did the second assignment, they were getting better uh, at giving a feedback on the a feedback in general and a feedback on the feedback. And they also uh, felt that they uh, self-improved. So now I'm going to detail those three points in my results. Regarding user experience, oops, I don't know what I did. Uh, I did something wrong. Yeah, no, it's bad. Um, so this is, um, when you use the user experience questionnaire plus, you just have, have to fill you know, the grades that you get on each question, working on a Likert scale from one to seven. And then you put all the data in a, an Excel form and it's going to automatically trigger this thing. And you don't have to work anymore. That's why it's such a valuable tool. And uh, the higher you are, the better the user experience here is. And as you can see, so Challenge Me is in gray, Moodle is in orange. The orange bar are much higher than the gray one. And especially in this rectangle here, where you can also see the error bars here. And there is barely any overlap between them, which might indicate that these are significant differences that we don't observe on the other four. And those things 
they refer to usability. It's usability is the extent to which I can perform a task efficiently, effectively, and in a satisfactory manner. Um, so Moodle is more useful, clearer, the perspicuity, the fact to learn, well, to learn how to use it seems easier and it's more efficient. Surprisingly, and don't, I don't have any explanation for this yet, because I did not collect the relevant data yet, uh, the trust was higher here in uh, Challenge Me. Uh, maybe you guys have hypotheses about that. Um, moving on to the preferences now. Uh, these, oh sorry, I'm not good. At, so these are, um, so during the submission phase and the peer assessment phase, it's similar. Moodle is better here because they are more familiar with it. Uh, the evaluation is a little better here. Um, it would have been much better if they didn't have uh, some sort of star system that I'm going to show you later that was difficult for the student to held, handle. Um, but look at this. Because there was no copy paste and everything was integrated into challenge me, they re and there is no discussion here regarding this, right? The retro feedback was much better um, because they didn't have the copy paste. It felt more uh, like a, a flow and uh, no interruption, no workarounds, and that's why we observed this. Um, and finally, about their attitudes, like I mentioned earlier, the data is really scattered here. Uh, it's a much tighter on the second uh, assignment, which um, highlights a better consensus, especially in terms of usefulness and clarity of the received feedback and self-improvement. So to take away, um, so yes, Moodle outperformed Challenge Me. Um, in terms of user experience, if you look at the KPIs and the score. However, uh, the students also like, half of them prefer Challenge Me because the process of peer review with retro feedback was smoother. Um, so if you look at the result like that and take a little bit of perspective, uh, the ideal tool would be the usability of Moodle workshop and with the integration of the retro feedback in it and that would be like what the students actually need uh, and it would be s valuable because this way they could really actually improve how they uh, perform review and yeah so um I presented as well the methodology that I used, the user experience questionnaire plus, the rubric, my bricolage with the two workshops that I could improve. And then uh, because Challenge Me and us were partner on this, uh, I gave them the result in June uh, 24. And this is the star system that I told you about to perform the actually the review and then the retro feedback. They had to push that blue button here to get the explanation, which was less smoother. Sorry, that's me. I'm already talking 19 minutes, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so um, they had to press this, and it was difficult to to judge between two stars, like uh, what's the difference between a five and a six, right? So they felt less in control that uh, compared to the Moodle rubric, which uh, in my case had uh, four or three levels that were super clear and you don't have to say, oh, a four is much, uh, uh, I don't know, what's the difference between a four and a, a six on this? What they did since then, and this is a release from um, last summer already, is that they don't provide the grid version of the rubric, but already a list now. So if, I, in my opinion, if I had to redo everything now using this, um, we wouldn't, we, back to that, to the preferences, uh, the evaluation would be graded much higher in, um, in Challenge Me. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you so much for your presentation. It is really, really interesting because Challenge Me is right now approaching every university in Quebec to do a pilot and to do an LTI integration. And we were approached as a university to do something with them. And we're still debating, is it worth it? Because it's really expensive. And when I just see your presentation, I uh, first of all, I'm impressed by the really research that you did. So you just had really good statistic in it. So at my point of view right now, I'm not sure I will go with Challenge Me actually, because Moodle seems doing really well, even if the workshop is quite hard to learn. So. I have the same opinion. Uh, in my opinion, the Moodle workshop should integrate an additional phase dedicated to retro feedback and then problem solved. Yeah. And in my case, for the experiment, they gave everything for free. So, it, because it was a pilot study. Um, a pilot study, but I think they have expectations. They would like us in our university to integrate them as a plugin, but I'm not sure because, yeah, I really, maybe if the community is going to tell the Moodle HQ, oh, you guys need to do retro feedback, they will do it because as a learning tool, it's really excellent. Yeah, and I don't know how it's in Europe, but in, in Quebec, Ludovic is really aggressive in their kind of way to approach the university. So I'm just like, okay. Anyway, it, that was perfect. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Hi, uh, thanks for Hi. the uh, presentation. It's uh, great to see the workshop in use. Um, I'm from the University of New South Wales in Australia. And many years ago, we did a lot of development work on the workshop tool. We added many features, including CSV upload of reviewers. And I helped somebody just last term do exactly what you're doing using two phases of the workshop so that they can review the reviews that were done on their, on their submissions. Um, however, with the CSV upload, you can actually assign the people to do the reviews to exact other uh, users. So when they were reviewing the reviews that were done on their papers, it was their papers that they were, doing, they were reviewing. So that will uh, address that need for you. Uh, we also added a bunch of other things like uh, group work and calibration so that you can calibrate people as reviewers before they actually do reviews. Um, I'll give you my card and you can yeah, look for, we'll it, on, you can look for it on card. GitHub. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, just to, so 34 I could actually handle assigning uh, peers, but I, I, I really love peer assessment. I'm using the workshop in all my six courses and I cannot handle uh, assigning manually stuff uh, with 400 students. So, um, yeah, I'm interested, but as a patch, I was suggesting maybe use, you know, separate groups of six people so I can still have my five reviews uh, per student uh, and do this throughout the semester and maybe voila, that's it. Uh, that's another form of bricolage, but I will definitely get your card. I'd like to visit you. <laughs> So I'll, I'll try to make it quick. I'm just curious about how you communicate it to the students that you were doing the study. Yeah, so I dedicated a full two hour course to explain just that. What I was expecting, uh, I was very clear about the comparison that they should not be judging me as an instructor trying to do things. And they were really getting into this. So first I presented my goals so they would understand. I asked them, I told them, uh, your data is going to remain strictly anonymous. Uh, it's not about, uh, yeah. And I, I said, I really want to go to Mexico, guys, so please <laughs> give me some uh, nice stuff. No, yeah. Um, so I was clear about the, the outcome for me. And then um, we set up the email account that very same day that I had with Challenge Me. Um, I helped them to navigate their user interface. I discovered stuff myself as well because I was not familiar with it. And then I spent time explaining the different rubrics. And it was two hours because we did it really slowly. But then this is necessary. You cannot just, uh, with such a complicated setting with groups and everything, 
uh, and some of them uh, mis uh, they made mistake. So they were trying to um, uh, submit their first work on the platform that was not the rank that was assigned to them. So yeah, I had to do a little troubleshooting uh, asynchronously, but it went really okay. And then they were asking about the results. So during the last uh, course of the semester, I presented what I already had. And they were like, oh, nice. And I asked them in an informal way, additional uh, explanation regarding their preferences and attitudes, which just confirmed the data. 